and welcome to worship. Those of you who are in person, those of you who are worshiping virtually, welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ. Um, keep an eye on your bulletin and your newsletter because as fall comes, there will be a lot going on. Um, and very importantly, Rally Day on September 10th with brunch and fun activities following after worship. So you won't want to miss that. Um, be sure to record your presence here uh, in our friendship pads. Uh, you'll find them near the center. You can then pass them down to uh, the people in the rest of your pew. We are the people of God who have answered the call to be here this morning. Many of you have greeted each other on the way in, downstairs in the fellowship hall, but this greeting, this time in worship, is a little different. This is recognizing the fellow members of this community of faith, recognizing Christ in you and Christ in me. So I invite you to stand, greet one another, and pass the peace of Christ.
Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. Would you please rise if you're able and join me in the call to worship? Our help is from God, who made heaven and earth. Come to, the, come to worship the one who hears all our prayers. If God were not on our side, we could, we could not, not live. live. If God were, were not for us, us we, we would be swept, swept away. away. God has gifted each one of us in unique ways. In our variety, we complement one another. We, we rejoice in God's, God's love and faithfulness. faithfulness. Blessed be our God, whose word is true. In thankfulness, we bring our joyous songs. We are here to pay attention to God's instructions. We, we are, are here seeking to discern God's, God's will. will. We, we are, are open, open to God's transforming, transforming spirit. spirit. Join me in the opening prayer. Good and faithful God, meet us in this place. In this hour, we pray. Comfort and confront us. Delight and disturb us. Exhort and expose us. Inspire us to generosity, faithfulness, and courage. Let us be changed by having been in your company and in and the in company, the company of, of your saints. Guard us, us from, from thinking, thinking that, that worship is just another hour in just, just another, another day. day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Are there any children here this morning? Let me double check. Okay, I had an interesting um, thing here ready for them, but it will save and be good on another day. So let's move on to special music.
Amen. This morning's first scripture reading is about the Israelite people who were oppressed by Pharaoh in Egypt before Moses was born. Pharaoh wanted to keep the Israelite slaves from becoming too numerous, so he enlisted the help of the midwives. But two Hebrew midwives named Shifra and Pua went against orders and helped save them. Thanks to them, Moses' sister, Miriam, Moses' mother, and Pharaoh's daughter, Moses lived and eventually was able to lead the Israelites out of slavery. And now the scripture from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the banks of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. And then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she, she said, I drew him out of the water. This morning's second scripture reading is from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or, the one, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered the him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I had skipped the children's time because it seemed we had none, um, but I can certainly go back to it. Would you like to come up front? Hi. How are you this morning? Good. Good. That's a head. It is. It's a head. We're going to kind of pretend that it's a real person's head. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about learning facts. Like, can you say your ABCs? Mm -hmm. All right. So, that's something that you learned. So, when you learn, Somebody says to you, you need to learn your ABCs. It's like you take this set of facts and you put them into this head. And so they go down in there. Or you're, you're learning how to, oh, I know, how about two plus two? Do you know what two plus two is? Two. Close. Four. You, exactly. You take two and you add two more and you get four. That's math facts. 
you, you have to learn those facts. They just all disappear into your head like that. Now, when we learn about Jesus, it's a little different. There are facts like Jesus lived in the area of Nazareth. Okay, there's a fact that we learn, and so that goes into our heads. Let's see, what else? Do you know something else about, about Jesus that's just a fact? How about... Not, he, he's not here anymore with us, is he? Not as a person. How about Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem? There's a fact that we know that we celebrate on Christmas. So there's some facts that just go into our head. Our brain just keeps absorbing all those facts. But there is one more. This is like... You know, knowing all these facts, it just hasn't made that much different. When the facts disappear into our head about Jesus, that doesn't necessarily change what we just throw them out of the head. We don't. They just went in there and they stayed. When you learn those things, they stay with you. Those I facts pick, it up. pick what up? The head. No, they, it didn't go on through. No. What? <laughs> it in there. Yep, it just stayed in there. When we learn about Jesus, it's not all those facts that are as I important. There's a hole at the bottom. No, there's not a hole at the bottom. It didn't go on through. <laughs> What's important to us is. Jesus changes our hearts. Jesus helps us know about God. And Jesus stays with us in our hearts all the time. And that's more important than those facts, is that no matter what, Jesus said, God loves you. God loves all the people. Those are some things that stay with you in your heart. And that's more important. Um, do you want to know the secret? Because I never like to claim that I know magic. So if you want to know the secret, don't touch. There's a special chemical in there. And it absorbed, it absorbed the styrofoam and just kind of melted it down. See... Magic would be more exciting, but um, God gave us science, too. And this is kind of science to know that that chemical does that. And so that it's important to know that it's science and I don't do magic. Okay? Okay. Thank you for coming. A few heartfelt words spoken at just the right moment can change the course of history. On a TED radio hour one time, I heard a young woman, I heard about a young woman's letter to the speaker who was on the TED stage. <clears throat> and she had met this speaker at her college. I'll just call her Jane. She said that she and her parents had traveled to the college that she was planning to attend. But Jane was terrified, unable to sleep the night before, worried she wasn't college material, worried that she would fail. So she said to her parents, I don't think I can do this. I'm not ready. I think we should just go home. So Jane's parents suggested that she try just that first day including the orientation session. And if she still felt that way, she did not have to stay, they would take her home. As they stood in line to go in for this orientation, a man, one of the professors at the college, came out dressed in a silly hat and holding a bunch of lollipops. He looked around, 
He met Jane's eyes and probably saw all that trepidation she was feeling. So he handed a lollipop to the man across from her in the aisle. And he said, I really think you should go and give this lollipop to that young woman over there. Well, the young man was kind of embarrassed, but he did. He went over and handed her the lollipop. And then this college professor who had announced his presence with a silly hat and everything said out loud so that her parents and everybody around would hear, oh my gosh, it's the very first day of college and already she's taking candy from strangers. <laughs> so everyone laughed, including Jane, and she was able to put aside some of her anxiety. The embarrassed man who had given her the lollipop laughed too. The tension was broken. Now the letter we were hearing in that hour uh, was from Jane to this professor, the lollipop man. And she thanked him because in that moment of laughter, she lost some of her fear of failure and she decided to stay and attend college. And so her life was changed. After reading the letter on the TED stage though, the lollipop, the lollipop man admitted the thing is that I have absolutely no memory of that day or of that young woman. Great moments are born from great opportunity even though we don't always recognize those great moments as they come along. But a few heartfelt words spoken at precisely the right moment can change the course of history. The Hebrew scriptures that we heard this morning told about the beginning of Moses' life. Pharaoh told the midwives to get rid of all the Israelite baby boys, but the midwives saw an opportunity to follow God's will rather than Pharaoh's, and they let the boys live. Pharaoh's daughter recognized the baby in the basket as a Hebrew child, but chose to protect the child and raise it in the palace as her own. Okay, so neither the midwives nor Pharaoh's daughter actually gave a speech or said any words that we know of, but it was a couple of small actions at just the right moment that changed the course of history. Great moments are born from great opportunity. Jesus created such an opportunity for his disciples as they traveled. We know from previous scripture that Jesus had been seeking some quiet time, some vacation time. And maybe that was what was going on here because this was a private conversation that Jesus was having with his disciples. And Jesus asked them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples reported what they had heard. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. Some say it was Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's the word on the street. But who do you say that I am? Jesus asked them, making the question personal. I can imagine the disciples beginning to kind of mumble some answers and talk among themselves. They had seen him heal. They'd seen him feed crowds of people. Maybe he is the prophet Elijah. Um, maybe he's a carpenter from Nazareth who's just extraordinarily wise. Uh, what are we going to do? How do we answer this question? But one voice rang out clearly. Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. A great moment born from a great opportunity. Peter makes a declaration about Jesus that changes the course of Peter's life and the history of the Christian community. It begins with a few heartfelt words spoken at just the right moment. A great speech. Well, maybe it wasn't a speech in the uh, technical sense of the word, more like the greatest comment ever made or just the greatest answer ever given. 
but it was powerful. So what makes Peter's statement so powerful? The greatest of speeches or comments or answers are given by the right person at the right moment with the right vision and understanding. All of this is true for Peter when he makes his declaration about Jesus, although Peter did not know it at the time. And I believe those opportunities come to us now and then, and we have the chance to be the right person at the right moment. And it can change someone's life, even if we never find out that it happened. Think about Peter. He was the right person, but he was not an extraordinary person. He has some strengths. He had some weaknesses. He was likely to jump into the water without weighing the consequences, and his faith wavered now and then. He was quite likely to put his foot in his mouth, and he would stumble badly when he denied Jesus on, at, on the night of the trial. But because Peter is so very human, just like any of us, he was the right person to make a declaration about Jesus. And he spoke at the right moment. At this point in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus was nearing the end of his ministry in Galilee. And soon he would head toward Jerusalem and face the suffering and death that awaited him there. But first, he needed to make sure that his disciples were clear about who he is and what the community of his followers would look like. This time in Philippi, in this quiet time, it was the right moment for Peter to speak. When he made that statement, he had the right vision. He sensed that Jesus was not just a prophet and not a man like John or the prophets that came before him. No, with the help of God, Peter could suddenly see clearly that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who had been anointed by God. And literally, that's what Messiah means in Hebrew, anointed, a title usually attached to a king. So Peter considered Jesus to be his king, the one who brings the kingdom of God into the middle of human life. On top of this, Peter had the right understanding. He grasped that Jesus is the son of the living God, the one who knows and shows God's divine power and love more clearly than anyone else. Jesus was impressed that Peter would come up with those words at that time. So impressed that he said to Peter, good for you, Simon, son of Joah, that answer didn't just come from you, it was revealed to you by God in heaven. Jesus saw that Peter's declaration was a pure gift of God and he was thankful for it. You are Peter, he said, and on this rock I will build my church and that church will be so strong that death itself will not overcome it. And Jesus concluded by giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven with authority to bind and loose, which means that Peter now had the authority to be the chief teacher in the church. It is in this statement about Peter having the keys to the kingdom of heaven that it resulted in so many of our sayings, jokes, pictures about Peter at the gate to heaven, the one you meet at the pearly gates. But in fact, the keys to the kingdom here were all about teaching. And the, the, the fact of the kingdom itself was a time when God's will would be done on earth rather than speaking of some place in the sky. Peter was given authority to teach in the name of Jesus and to share his grace and truth with the world, just as the church continues to do today. So what can we do to follow the example of Peter in being the right people 
at the right moments, sharing the right vision and understanding, remembering that great moments come from great opportunity. But I believe that often these great moments are from little minor opportunities that we will miss if we aren't careful. When a child asks, why are you praying? That could be an opportunity for you to change the life of that child. When someone says, why would you get up and go to church on a Sunday morning when you could stay at home and relax? Then you are given an opportunity to change the world. When a discussion starts about racism in our city and in our nation, you may have the opportunity to talk about all people being children of God, and you could change the course of history. You could be the one spotted doing a kindness for a neighbor that influences someone else to do the same. Each of us has great opportunities now and then to play the role of Peter in the world today. We are the right people to say, yes, Jesus is our Messiah. We are the people who honor Jesus as the Prince of Peace. The students and teachers who grasp that Jesus is the truth. We are people who have seen that our relationship with God is what gets us through hard times. So we can speak at the right moments. When a person is struggling and needs a word of encouragement. When a conflict erupts and could be diffused by a message of reconciliation. When a child needs a word of guidance or of love. The right vision focuses on Jesus as our sovereign, the one who rules over us with perfect guidance, grace, and love. He is the master that we can serve with our time, our abilities, and our money. He is the Lord who gives us directions as we make decisions if we just ask for the help. Jesus has shown us what perfect love is and led us to our loving God. We who have grown up in the faith have an understanding of Jesus because we see he's in a close and intimate relationship with God who is alive and well and active in human life. When we see the character of Jesus, we get a better understanding of God and get a glimpse of the grace and truth of our Creator. Peter was given an opportunity to speak about Jesus, and he turned it into the greatest ever. He didn't miss his moment, and neither should we. Amen. Will you stand if you are able as we sing, Master, let me walk with thee. Free. 
You may be seated. Get comfortable, take a deep breath, prepare your hearts for a time of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, God, when we consider how much you have entrusted to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us to be faith-filled and to desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed all that you have given to us. Oh God, we pray for the church gathered today, both here and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray also for the nation and the people of Ukraine and people around the world whose lives are interrupted, whose lives are destroyed by violence. We pray for our nation. We pray for the people of Puerto Rico. We pray for all of those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those who are oppressed and heavy laden, for those who are sick are in despair. We pray for those we know and love, and we name June, Bill, Ellen, Jeannie, Terry, Elizabeth, Barbara, and Paul. O oh God, minister by your spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed and help us walk faithfully in the path of Jesus Christ. And hear us as we pray the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. children praying Lord send your spirit in this place Lord listen to your children praying send us love send us power send us grace Listen to you. 
one of the missions that our church has participated in the past and will be participating in starting very shortly is the Festival of Sharing. And so we are happy to have Susan and Dennis Hendricks with us this morning. And we will learn more about Festival of Sharing. How about up here with this microphone, if that's okay? Thank you, thank you so much for inviting us to come to your lovely church, and um, what, a, what a great sermon, what a great message. Um, a message of opportunity and a message of hope, and, and that is exactly what I was going to talk about, too, so, and we didn't even call each other, so that, that's kind of that's cool, too. Um, also, I'd like to thank St. John's for your long, long history with Festival of Sharing and all the, all the participation and all the things that you've done so in the past. Again, my name is Susan Kendrick, and I've worked with uh, Festival of Sharing, volunteer style, um, for the last 10 or 15 years, and so my husband and I are doing that. For the last 42 years, Festival of Sharing has been a response to hunger and need all over the United States, Missouri, and internationally. Festival of Sharing is divided into three different spots, three different categories. We have um, Church World Services, which uh, works internationally and nationally, and you have an opportunity to give to that. It's also quilt, um, we have a, the quilt, uh, I wanna say the quilt auction, and that works with Blankets Plus, and that is also internationally and nationally. But then we have Festival of Sharing, and all Festival of Sharing is Missouri. Everything that you give with Festival of Sharing stays in Missouri. We have, you probably remember going to Sedalia years ago, I think like seven years ago, we went, all of us went to Sedalia and we worked hard two or three days and we had agencies come and then they serve, and then they picked up those things that we could help those agencies with. We have divided that into seven different mini fests now and those are in your booklet and you can find those in uh, online as well. Because of the seven mini fests, we have taken the big Sedalia Festival and we have broken that into seven different areas so that we could really focus, focus heavily on that area. So we have a St. Louis area, we have a Kansas City area, we have a Northeast area, which this is new this year, is in Santa Fe. You may not recognize that name, but it's, it's a very small little community near uh, Mark Twain Lake. So we work with that, we work with De Dexter, excuse me, and we also go to Springfield, and I may have mentioned that one as well, um, and Tipton. So those are our seven mini-fests, and each one of those mini-fests has a personality of its own. You may come to any of those mini-fests and join us in putting together uh, food boxes, putting together ru packing rice, and then distribution, which that's my thing. I am in charge of distribution, so that's, you can come any of those you are always welcome any of the seven it doesn't have to be here in the st louis area so come i invite you to do that um i've gone over my five minutes i already know i have so i am so sorry that's okay um, <laughs> i was a classroom teacher and we were always late my class was always late to to lunch, we were late to everything we went to because I always talked too long and squeezed every second out of everything. You will see, and also I wanted to uh, thank your, your mission team. They have put together some really fabulous uh, information on Festival of Sharing. I do have booklets too that you can, uh, you are most certainly welcome to, and also online. But I just wanted to just thank you again for all of your participation in Festival of Sharing and in cordially, and I, this is not something that I'm saying just off the cuff, I want to cordially invite you to come to many fests and uh, participate in some of those things. If you're being led to put together a box or put together a kit, all of that information is in there. I do want to tell you that we do serve about 150 agencies throughout the state of Missouri. That 
trickles down into 44,000 plus um, individuals who benefit from Festival of Sharing. 44,000, and you were talking about opportunities to make an impact. One food box will feed a family of four for an entire week. That's, that's a huge impact on a family and on a community. So and that's just a small thing. If you want to go through, if you want to go through your closets and just give a good, um, gently used blanket, we have more um, requests for blankets this year than we've had ever in the past. People are needing blankets. They're just cold. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the what the the meaning of that is, but blankets. Something very simple. So again, thank you, mission team, and I've, I've gone over my time. Thank you for letting us come. What a beautiful church, and thank you again for this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing with us. I invite you to celebrate our giving the many ways that we give, including through Festival of Sharing, by standing if you are able, and we'll sing the doxology. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. As you have, you have blessed, blessed us, so oh God, we are eager to share. We want our gifts to preserve and extend life to your people here in this place and wherever our influence can reach. Our gifts of our time, our abilities, and our money are a symbol of the dedication of our whole selves to your will. Amen. of worship and now we go out finding many ways to serve God 
and serve one another. Wherever you may go, may you be forever blessed, forever loved, forever cradled in God's arms, forever called by name. Go knowing God's grace, sharing God's peace, living God's justice, bearing God's blessing to all. Amen. Thank you.